everybody, this is Josh. Welcome to Game 4 in a Best of 7 series being played between Rain Spades. He's the blue Terran on the left side of MLG Metalopolis. His challenger, actually not challenger, the defending champion of the V. It is Vile Hawk, the red Zerg over on the right side. So I think I only called him a challenger because Spades is actually tearing it up right now. Three games to zero. That last map was a little embarrassing for Vile Hawk. Six pool did not quite work out at all. Uh, Spades basically scouted everything coming at his base. All he had to do was start a supply depot and it was over before it even began. Game four here. This is Hawk's last chance to try and claw his way back from a 3-0 deficit. Uh, Spades, really all he's got to do is stick to this marine tank strategy. I think he might actually be okay with it. Hawk is the one who actually needs to change it up a little bit. Uh, just whatever he's been doing so far has not been working at all. But this is the V. It's the 24th week this year that we've run this best of seven king of the hill show match series uh, spades actually was a challenger a while ago a few weeks ago but um it sort of slipped my mind when i was looking for people to invite so uh, definitely don't want to um invite someone more than once when there are so many other willing players out there excuse me for that little faux pas but uh, if spades does manage to win here against hawk then it shows that uh, the invite was worth it at least spades building a refinery now here inside of his main oh and i wanted to say of course that the v is hosted by complexity gaming sponsored by creative sound blaster pny and qpad usa.com i'm josh ask joshy you can check out all my stuff stuff on twitter.com facebook.com and youtube.com slash ask joshy i'd really appreciate it if you go check out my stuff after the series is over whether it's four games or seven games <laughs> who knows uh hawk is actually going hatch first once again this is the same thing he's done basically every single game last week against this is jimmy and every game so far here except for that six pool uh this that was the only variance that we've seen out of him so far and spades already has his second depot up before the three minute mark just in case in Another six pool comes his way. Of course, I don't think he's expecting that, and uh, he probably would have passed some zerglings and drones already with this scouting SEV if that were the case. But he's going to find Hawk on this cross position, see the spawning pool. I believe he saw the spawning pool. He went kind of far in there. Yeah, he did see the spawning pool. Sees the hatchery over halfway done. So let's see if Spades just sticks to what he knows and goes for that mass marine tank play. Lots and lots of drones here for Hawk. Looks like he's just focusing heavily on droning up. Of course, that's the only thing he can build before the spawning pool finishes. Silly Josh. Three drones on the extractor. Makes me think Zergling Speed's going to be the first uh, upgrade of the day. Hatchery sprouts open there at the natural, so soon he can start uh, really massing up those drones. Getting these queens out, of course, is pivotal. Defense against Hellions. Defense against something like this Reaper, which is a little bit surprising to me. Where is the Reaper? Wow, Spade's actually destroying his own depot. I guess it really doesn't matter that much uh, for the Terran player. It does help out Zerg players so that they can't be walled in with pylons or bunkers at the bottom of their ramp, but the first Reaper is out. He's moving across the map. He's not going to be contested unless these two links find him, and I think he'll be able to take out two links pretty easily. It only takes two shots from a Reaper to kill a Ling, and yeah, he just slaughters both of them without taking any damage. So Hawk probably already a little bit miffed at that. He does have his queen up, ready to go. Like I said before, it's kind of like a mobile spine crawler. It certainly helps against these Reapers and against Hellions. Oh, he's got two queens out already. All right, good move there from Hawk. Third queen on the way. Three more drones and Zergling Speed also in production back at Spade's base. Uh, looks like he's most likely still going to stick to that marine tank sort of setup. Just the Reaper opening is pretty good for Metalopolis because you can hop up these cliffs and really be annoying if your Zerg opponent is not ready for it. Back in Spade's base, Command Center going to be done here soon, expanding pretty quickly. Why can't Reapers jump up and shoot Overlords? That is a good question. Maybe they're too fat to actually get airborne. They just kind of float around. Um, but anyway, uh, 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 I don't know. I don't know the physics behind it, honestly. But Command Center turning over to an orbital. He's going to make some more mules and SCVs before dropping over to the low ground there at the natural. Lots of Marines coming out of this reactor. Barracks and little hellion coming out of the tech lab which is researching blue flame this is the first blue flame upgrade we've seen in this series let's see how effective spades is going to be with it building only one hellion at a time of course after the hellion upgrades done he can flip it back over onto the reactor and just make tons and tons of nightmarish blue hellions for hawk to deal with six more drones coming out for hawk he has been a little bit slow making his tech switches he just waits for the lair gets that spire up so spades should actually have a pretty significant window of time to go in there and use these blue flame hellions 
Two Hellions already done, third one on the way. Blue Flame Research itself is nearly done. The Hive is going to be done here in just a moment as well. Sorry, not Hive, Lair, so he can start to build that uh, Spire in just a moment. And of course, Mutalisks do pretty well against Blue Flame Hellions. You might even call it a hard counter. <laughs> Hellions can't shoot up. It's a fact of nature and science, but two spine crawlers coming up here for Hawk. Got to keep these queens very mobile and ready for anything once those Hellions show up. Back up in the main, another, no, not a spine crawler, it is the Spire that we were talking about earlier. Three more drones in production as well, going to help him get enough minerals and gas to actually build those mutas. Right now he only has enough for three mutalisks, uh, gas of course being the important resource there. Four blue flame hellions, is it going to be enough for, for spades to want to move? Oh, he's doing a medevac drop, oh, uh, this is actually called an octo drop, if you ever have watched GLHF.TV, my roommate, the gun run, coined that term quite a while ago during the beta, octo drop. Basically, it's just a medevac full of eight marines. Oh, but look at this. The blue flame hellions on the low ground protecting the marines from all these lings, and hellions actually don't kill queens that fast, but this number of blue flame hellions still deals uh, damage pretty quickly. Oh, spades moving out of position just a little bit. These marines are all going to go down. Transfusion onto queen number two. Hellions on the low ground not going to be able to finish off those queens, but they are going to move around and look for a soft spot in this defense. Hawk actually has really, really good placement with these spine crawlers, and Metalopolis has been in the map pool since the early beta, actually for Ever. Metalopolis has always been in the, in the map pool, so this building placement has been practiced and perfected. Hawk actually taking an advantage in a game in the V week 24. This is the first time I would actually say that Hawk is at a bit of an advantage because Spades basically spent a lot of time researching that Blue Flame Hellion, spent a lot of resources trying to kill off some Lings, didn't score a Queen kill or anything, and now the counterattack coming into the natural. There are no Siege Tanks, there's really only a handful of Marines and two Blue Flame Hellions to be able to defend against these Lings. Hawk at least keeping him uh, cramped inside of his base, and soon these seven mutalisks will help out in a big, big way. There's no turrets up, there's no engineering bay to even build turrets, uh, no vikings on the way, only medevacs still coming out of this uh, starport here. We have three barracks total, actually four barracks total, there's one on the low ground, five barracks total, two on the low ground, excuse me, lots and lots of marines in production, six at a time at the moment. Baneling Nest coming up now, flyer attacks level one, another queen, just make queens all game long, you might as well, they're so useful and don't take very much supply. Evolution Chamber going to be done here soon, plus one melee attacks is Hawk's favorite upgrade from those Evolution Chambers, and third base coming up now, which means after this thing gets saturated, we will see a macro hatch. Oh, excuse me, Mutalisks already poking in here, might actually score a medevac kill, no, not with these Marines underneath, they're going to look around for a softer spot, a couple of bunkers here at the front with only three Marines tucked inside, this squishy backside for spades could actually be in trouble here, lots and lots of Mutalisks flying in, going to take out the SCV building the turret as well as another two, three, four SCVs total for these Mutalisks, and they escape without losing a single one. Good pickup there by Hawk. Spades fortifying now, though, with some more missile turrets and actually building a third command center. Lots and lots of lings ready to turn into banelings at a moment's notice. We have centrifugal hooks and those flyer tags still being upgraded. Derp -a derp -a derp Lots of turrets going up, supply depots going up. Might want to go ahead and drop a turret inside this main mineral line. Sometimes Terran players won't do that. They'll just fortify the outside and leave the inside super soft and squishy. Here's actually two turrets here inside the main. Only one here, uh, here at the natural and lots and lots of marines ready for anything. He does not have combat shields or stim pack. Here's a medevac floating around without anything. It looks like I may have missed a drop unfortunately. Excuse me. Looks like we missed... Uh, <laughs> looks like we missed a little bit of a drop, sorry, but we do have lots of Mutalisks still flying around looking for Metavax. Little does he know that it just returned safely home. Macro Hatch is built now for Vile Hawk, or at least halfway done. Look at this production tab, it's a huge string of stuff. Tech Lab, two turrets, two refineries, supply depot, command center, SCVs, marines, stim pack, combat shield, plus one weapons, and this com uh, command center will be done soon. Will he go to the gold, or will he go to that safe third base nestled in the back? have to imagine it's going to be the safe third base at this point. There's no real reason for him to risk taking that gold and then just being harassed all game long. One little zergling is going to be a little difficult to kill, but, you know, I think he'll be okay. He's going to the gold! Okay, disregard everything I said a moment ago. Uh, <laughs> we got... We got Spades moving through the middle of the map. He actually, I'm not sure he has enough here to stand up against the Mutalisks and Banelings that will soon be here. There's 17 Banelings in production. Oh my goodness, the Zerg Shredder is going to be monstrous. He doesn't have enough Siege Tanks to deal with this. That is a, way too many Banelings. Spades is going to lose his entire army without question. Another nothing left but Medivacs and Hawk 
building upon that advantage that we saw earlier. Uh, Spade just says derp after losing that huge army. There's pretty much nothing he can do at this point. Hawk is in just major, major macro mode now. Uh, even though he only has 47 harvesters, that was just a massive loss. All he's got less, uh, all he's got left now are 13 marines here and a single siege tank. These mutilists going to be able to just harass everything. But Hawk, uh, he could basically just sit back, continue massing drones, massing mutilists. He can get that death cloud of mutas like 25 strong, and uh, I'm not sure Spades will be able to rebuild it be able to rebuild fast enough. Six marines coming along. <laughs> Spade says derp and builds more tanks. That's how Terran works. Uh, <laughs> Twelve Metalists still marauding around. They might actually, oh, I was going to say they might be able to pick off some add-ons, but they will have to power down this turret pretty quickly to be able to do that. No, here's a soft squishy spot right here. Siege Tank gets taken out very quickly to take out this tech lab, but instead he's looking for even more free units. Not going to find any. The marines are returning home now. He focuses on that reactor. Very good choice there. Uh, go ahead and pick that off. I would have enjoyed seeing that tech lab fall as well, since those tanks can be a menace a little bit later if you're going with that speedling baneling mixture. Hawk moving on to four bases now. Keep in mind, he does have that macro hatch as well, so his production is going to be off the charts as soon as he gets some money. Muta still flying around, looking at... Oh, Burrowed Banelings! We did see this a lot in that series against Check 6. This is Jimmy. We'll see if it ever actually comes into play here. Uh, looks like just Creep Tumors along the top highway. I would have expected to see some more Banelings burrowed, but you never know what Hawk is going to do. No turrets up here at the gold just yet. Maybe a little bit of an oversight from spades. More turrets are being built right now, though, in the main, and there's not enough marines here. There's not enough SCVs or turrets. This is going to be brutal. He can pick off all of these tech labs, actually, with this huge flock of mutilisks. He is actually about 20 strong here. Uh, is he going to take out the barracks? No, he's just going to go for free units. He could actually dip into the main right now and kill uh, all of these SCVs because there's only one turret in range. Spades really can't afford to send back just a couple of marines like that. Now the advantage is a little bit too big for Hawk, and that medevac is going to fall with six marines still inside. This Muta Ball can still just continue killing off everything. They do have their plus one flyer attacks. Uh, go kill the barracks, man. Why aren't you going to kill the barracks? They're freebies. These marines are going to be too slow to return. And he doesn't have that many as it is. Hawk, a little bit questionable decision there, but erring on the side of caution. Actually flying back over to the gold base now where there are no turrets. Only one, two turrets at the top side. There are a handful of marines here, though. He does pick off a free tank and perhaps an SCV or two. Uh, Spade just has marines littered around the place. This is not good against a massive ball of mutalisks like that. They are all going to fall down. Hawk is happy to lose one or two mutalisks to pick off that number of marines. Now he can just flee from the stim marines. Will he even lose one mutalisk? Uh, oh, the baneling bomb went off. Oh my goodness, that landmine was set up perfectly. Baiting those marines with the mutalisk, triggering the baneling explosion. That was actually super duper clever, Hawk. I'm so glad you're actually fighting your way back here. A quick 4-0 just doesn't look good. And I'm glad that your uh, muta and baneling control so far this game has been... Um, you know, edging out spades in basically every encounter. So Hawk getting a little bit of a second win here um, should be in good position to take this game. I mean, he is up by 80 supply, but geez, that was actually really, really massive. <laughs> no Thor's in production for spades. That's something to note. Uh, he's really just building marines and tanks still while Hawk is on an 80 supply advantage. Uh, he did build a few more turrets inside his main, but now this speedling army going to clean up all those marines so quickly. I don't know how spades is going to be able to do anything from this point. He hasn't been aggressive at all since he lost his army there near that bottom base. And all these links and mutas should clean up the army, and I think we'll get, we should see a GG here soon. All these turrets and marines getting surrounded by the zerglings. SCVs trying to repair the planetary fortress, but the zerglings actually edge them out. And now the planetary falls. Uh, Spades doesn't really actually have any fighting forces. He's got 17 marines and two tanks. 85 supply total against 187 uh, giant zerg army here from Hawk. 34 zerglings and three more mutalisks, as well as two infestors coming along now. He's not even going to check that third base because he's had that zergling there the whole time. He knows there's no third base, and he's just going to plow right in here with the rest of his mutalisks and zerglings. I'm surprised that Spades is actually playing this out. Um, it's going to be extremely difficult for him to fight his way back. There's the GG. And Game 4 will go to our reigning champion, Vile Hawk. Let's get into Game 5 and see if he can keep this comeback alive.